means it automatically goes to active state because of the priority value is highest if you are enabling preemption in r1 router and r2 router means it automatically goes to the active state in case if you are not enabling preemption means if r1 router fast ethernet 0 slash 0 link and comes up means even though the priority value is highest it, it will be in standby state only okay so now we can ping to the pc1 ping 117.203.158.0.0 so we can get replay so just check trace route 117.203.158.1 so it will go to r2 router to communicate to the isp show r so the r the virtual mac address is r2 virtual mac address let's we can go to the pc2 and ping 117.203.158.1 so we can get and replay so next trace route so 117.203.158.1 so here it will goes to the r2 router because of r1 router is down but here we can see show r yeah here we can see the virtual mac address is r1 router but it will communicate to isp through r2 router because of r1 router is goes down but it will take that virtual mac address of r1 router and it is can sense to the pc and it will communicate to r2 router once that r1 router will comes up means it is comes to active state it's an standby state standby state means it's an active virtual forwarder and it's an active virtual gateway and active virtual forwarder so depends upon the load balancing method so it will be load balance the traffic here we can see 007b401 is a virtual MAC address of R1 router but it will be communicating to ISP through R2 router but previously 007b401 f401 is an R1 virtual MAC address so it will communicate through R1 router but here the link is down so let's we can go to the R1 router and give no shutdown to enable this interface here we can see the link is up and the state is in had to state okay now again we can ping to the isp 117.203.158.1 we can get an replay trace route 117.203.158.1 so it will communicate through r2 router let's we can go to the pc1 ping 117.203.158.1 2.03.158.1 and trace route 117.203.158.1 here we can see 172.30.200.1 so just check show or yeah so previously here we can see previously we can ping to ping to isp so the isp ip is 117.203.158.1 and trace route it will goes to r2 router here the virtual mac address is r1 virtual mac address but here the r1 router link fast ethernet 0 slash 0 link is goes down so that's why only it will be communicating through r2 router but it will send its r1 virtual mac address now the link can comes up again we can ping to isp 117.203.158.1 the ping is success here we can trace route so it will goes to the r1 router here we can see the virtual mac address is r1 virtual mac address so even though if you active virtual gateway can goes down it automatically r2 router can becomes the active virtual gateway and active virtual forwarder okay So in GLBP also we can use the track object to track this interface WAN link because in case if WAN link can goes down means how the R1 router can know to know the WAN link is goes down or not. So using track object we can track this interface also. Okay. So using GLBP that is gateway load balancing protocol is an Cisco proprietary protocol. When compared to the HSRP and VRRP here load balance the traffic because in HSRP only one router is in active state and other one is in standby so through the active state only we can forward the traffic to the isp in standby state waits until it becomes the active then only we can forward the traffic through standby router in vrrp also like same 
master backup but in but in glbp one router can add as an avg and avf that is active virtual gateway and active virtual forwarder and r2 router is responsible for active virtual forwarder so the active virtual forwarder duty is only forwards the traffic and active virtual gateway is responsible for the arp request so if responsible for sending the response to the arp request so using glbp we can load balance the traffic so thank you for watching my video for further updates subscribe my channel thank you